So I'm in a new project, I'm previewing at 1K. I'm gonna right click in the graph and I'm gonna search for a rugged landscape. So rugged, we want something that's got some high areas and some low areas. If you need to change it, you can just change the seed. Something like that looks fine. It doesn't matter too much for this example. We just want some lower areas on the map where our lakes or our lake is going to sit. So let's drag out from rugged. And now let's search for craggy. And craggy is a surface uh, modifier or a surface node. Let's add that. And as you can see, it's added some really finely detailed, broken up, rocky like surface, which looks great. But I only want this craggy effect on the lower areas. And to get that, I can mask by height. To add it is very simple. So with the craggy node selected in its details on the right hand side, just click at the bottom to add a modifier. And then we've got mask by height and straight away it's masking some of the areas or some of the craggy areas off. I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. So in the modifier, I'm going to drag where it says height. I'm just going to drag the bar down. And you can see it's now covering the lowest area as well. I've dragged the, the line or the bar down to zero but I want to just go to the second bar. I'm going to drag that down. And then it starts to mask out the higher areas. The lower I drag it down, the more height it's going to mask out. And something like that looks great. And you've got some other options, some fall off and some dissolve. I'm going to leave this as it is because it looks fine. But mask by height, I mean, it's as simple as that. It's, it's a really easy to use, but highly effective and useful modifier. So when we come to texturing, I'm going to give this rocky area, or we're going to give this rocky area a slightly different color. I'm going to add another node, height node, to actually act as a mask for the texturing. So drag out from Craggy and now search for height. And this brings us a height node. And as you can see, it creates a mask. Now I don't want the mask to go that high. So in its details where it says range, I'm just going to drag it down. And there you can see it's only covering or it's only the white, the lighter area. It's only where our craggy rocks are. And when we come to masking or texturing, sorry, when we come to texturing later, we'll be able to use this as a mask. And that looks great. Again, we can always adjust it if need be. So now we can move on to the erosion node. So I'm going to drag out from craggy. I'm going to search for E2 and that brings up erosion 2 so let's use erosion 2. With it selected in its details I'm just going to drag up the duration to increase the strength of the, of the erosion and now it's looking great. The problem we've got now is that this craggy effect is now getting eroded out and I want to keep it pretty much as it was for this landscape. Now to do that I can mask out the erosion and one way I can do that or we can do that is if we drag off the mask, we can actually use a draw node. So drag off, search for draw and add that in. Now, if you click on the erosion node again, the erosion effect has completely been removed because the draw node is just masking it out. So click on the draw node on the right hand side on the top right in the three lines or the hamburger button, I believe it's called, does select mask. So by default, we want a mask option for this. Now click on open painter. And now click back on the erosion node. And what's great is this painter panel that's come up, this is going to stay no matter what node we click on. So we can see the effect it's having as we paint. We don't have to stay selected on the draw node. Now it's fairly straightforward. We've got three options in this painter panel. We've got the size. So I'm just going to drag that up. So I've got a larger paintbrush. Hardness can stay where it is. That's just the gradient blend between mask and unmasked areas. About halfway is usually good. And then we've got height. So if I drag height right up to the top value, what that's going to do is that's going to reveal uh, the erosion at a value of like 100%. You can drop it, drag it halfway through, which is like about 50%. If you go to zero or the bottom or the lowest value, that basically covers up the mask again. But let's just drag that right to the top. So it's furthest point or right to the, I should say, drag it to the furthest right so you can. And now if I just start painting, I just hold down the left mouse button like so. You can see that area is now showing erosion. 
So by using the draw mask, we can mask out very specific areas of the node that it's connected to. It's extremely useful in many cases, but for this, I'm just gonna paint out the rest of the eye areas or where the, where the craggy mask is not showing. Now we've got the erosion showing on the, the higher, the slopes and these higher areas, but it's not showing on the craggy area, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Just to finish off, I'm just gonna reduce the size of the paintbrush. And now I'm just gonna paint out these smaller areas. What I will do is I'll reduce the height strength or the height value down a little bit and the size up a little bit. And I'm just gonna, just gonna draw around the edges so it just gives us a nicer gradient. I don't wanna to go too much on the craggy area, so I'm gonna go and paint over that mask that's already there. You can go into the craggy area a bit, of course. And now we're gonna get a more gentle gradient between the masked and unmasked area, like so. And now I'm just gonna close down the painter panel and we're done there. So for my erosion, I'm now gonna drag out from the out socket and I'm gonna add a lake node. Add a lake and that's looking pretty good. I might just increase precipitation. So if you want to bring up your water level, just increase precipitation and that's looking great. So what we've got now is we've got water around this craggy rocky area, but the rest of the landscape is using the erosion effect. So we're getting a really nice effect around by where the water is. It looks like the water has broken up the landscape, but where the water isn't, we've just got our standard erosion which looks great. So this is actually the landscape completed. Now we can move on to the texturing. Before we do that, we're gonna create one more mask. For that, we're gonna create a water mask. So we've got these different masks here. If we actually right click on the lake node and go to show a locked 2D viewport, it brings up a 2D view. We can right click, and we can select the different masks. Now you can see there, I've got a somewhat distorted preview. Now that's either because of my graphics card. I, I, I don't think it's Gaia, it could be Gaia. Either way, when you right click, it shows the different masks we can use. And I know for this, I just wanna use the water. We've got a depth and a shore, for example. I just want the water mask. A little bit difficult to see exactly, but you know, you get the idea. I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna drag out from water. And I'm actually gonna add an adjust node. An adjust node will use the water socket as a mask. And now we can adjust the strength. So with that adjust node selected, I can drag up the multiplier or I can drag it down and it gets rid of it completely. I'll probably just keep it as it is, but just to show you, that's great. With the adjust node selected, press F2 and rename this as water mask. Now with it still selected, press P and let's add a portal. Let's select the lake. Also press P again. And in the out socket, add another portal. So we can use portals to connect nodes to other nodes without having to use a connection line. So for example, maybe just beneath lake, right click, search for texture base. And now with that selected, press P and in the in socket, click on it. And the portal we're looking for is gonna be the last node in our landscape chain or sequence of nodes, which is obviously is the lake where we added our out portal. So select lake. So now with that portal connected, the texture base has got information or all the information it needs about the landscape and it creates a mask for the texturing. So before we go any further, let's just save the project. It's masking, masking tut. And also let's just click on the lake node and let's just preview this in 4K. So at the top, change the preview resolution to 4K. It'll take a moment to rebuild the landscape. Now, the reason we want to preview this in 4K is it does change the shape of our landscape or it can change certain areas of the landscape. So as you're going along, do check your landscape in the highest resolution in 4K. This is actually looking really good. It hasn't changed like the layout particularly. It's just increase the detail, so that's brilliant. I'm just gonna change this back to 2K because working in 4K is just very demanding and just takes too long having to wait for the previews to update. So that's great. I'm gonna go back to the texture base and from the texture base, I'm gonna drag off and select set map. Now, I mean, we could do this in various colors, but I'm gonna looking for something that's a bit more green. 
So I'm going to click on the green category and scroll through till I find a green color palette that I like. That's looking pretty good. I could, again, we can always change this later on if we wish. So that's 288. I'm going to stay with that one. Now I need something to make some cliff faces. So I'm going to drag off from the texture base again and select the set map. This time I'm going to go to a rock or I'm already in rock, but I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to select number 12 and in its details below the color palette selection, I'm just going to drag the slider where we've got this range of colors and I'm just going to make it so it's just the white or the lighter colors because I want rocks that are kind of a grayish white, a bit like um, the Cliffs of Dover, the White Cliffs of Dover. That looks fine. I maybe bring up the lightness a little bit as well. From the first set map, I'm going to drag out and connect that to the second set map. And now I want to mask out just the slopes, just where these hill areas are. So from the combine node, I'm going to hover over the mask socket, which is at the bottom of it. I'm going to drag off and then I'm going to search for a slope. I'm going to add a slope and the slope needs information about the terrain. So press P with the slope node selected, click on in and then select the lake portal again. And now we've got this um, brilliant mask. So we just click on combine. If we look there, the black areas are where the green is showing through and the white areas is where the, uh, the rock is showing through. So click on slope. And then in its details at the bottom, click on invert. So we can invert that. So if I click on combine again, and now we've inverted it. I'm just gonna select or press F to force the preview of at this combine node. I'm gonna select the slope. And then in its details, I'm just gonna play around with the range a bit. And if we drag it down, you can see that it's bringing out that mask. Perhaps I don't want it too much. In fact, I might select a different color palette for the cliffs. So let me scroll through and see if I can find something I prefer. So in the end, I have gone with sand and I've gone with zero and in its processing values, I've changed it to equalize and all the other values, hue, saturation, lightness, I've kept on zero. That's something I'm happier with. Perhaps we'll adjust the light values at the end to bring this out because it's a little bit dark. So now we've got a uh, green areas and on the slopes we've got our rocky areas. Now what I want to do is I actually want to mask out just this craggy area here so we can give this a, a different color and following my reference image looking at this here it's got where the shoreline when the tide comes in it's got this kind of seaweed darker green patches where the water covers so let's now drag off of the texture base again search for a set map and for this let's go to green actually let me just select the combine node press f to stop it from forcing the view and now i can select this set map the one that is selected by default or randomly i believe is green 107 that actually might work it looks like kind of a muddy effect i'm going to stay with that i'm going to drag off of the first combine node connect it to the set map now earlier on we created this height map here and i'm going to use this perhaps the fall off i'll just reduce that a little bit that looks better we're also going to need to add a portal to this height map or this height mask i should say so press p and then out we don't need to rename it because it's just going to be called height anyway so back to this combine node select it press p on the mask, select it, and then we've got height. And now we've got this mask. And in blend, I'm gonna keep it on blend, ratio up one. Do the water last, so we don't have to worry about the water. And perhaps that height node could come out a bit higher. Let's, let's just force that combine node. So I'll select it and press F. Select the height node, and now let's increase the range. And there we can see that's nicely covering this craggy area. Now let's go back to the combine node, select it again. Maybe let's reduce the ratio of the blend a little bit. And that's fine, that's looking really good. So that's how we can mask out specific areas with the height node. I might just have a quick look at some darker green. I've selected in green 124. I'm not exactly following my reference here, but I think that's looking quite nice. Um, I like that, so I'm going to stay with that. And imagine maybe in this case the water is washing away the grass. Maybe it's kind of working in an opposite way. But finally, let's just do the water. So drag off of our texture base again, add a set map, 
Drag off of the combine node, the previous combine node, plug that into the set map, select that. Sorry, let me zoom in a bit so you can see that easier. Select that combine node, press F to unforce it. Now select this final set map and select blue. And then select a blue node. I think 0, 018 is fine. Select the final combine node, press P, and then go to mask. And now we've got this water mask, so select the water mask. And now it's just masking out this water area. Let's just change this to 4K. That will take a while to process. We'll just preview it in 4K and that's looking great. So to finish off, I'm just gonna adjust the lighting. I'm just gonna increase the sun intensity. And that looks, that looks good. So this has given us a really nice broken up shoreline where the water is coming up against the land. And this is just one way of numerous different ways that you can use the mask by height node. So if you've got any questions or comments, please do leave them in the comment section and thanks.